Hey, today I show you how to save and load a game. You can apply this to any variables you like. In this tutorial I'm showing an example to save and load the player location. First I show you how to save and load when pressing the keys and afterwards how to automatically save and load the game. Okay, first I'm creating a new folder. I'm calling this blueprints. Open this and right click here in the counter browser. Click on Blueprint class, and here in all classes, search for Save Game. Select this. I'm calling this, for example, BP Our Save Game. Open this, and here you can add now variables that you want to save and load. For this tutorial, I'm going with the Player Transform, which includes the location and rotation of the player. Also the scale, but I guess that doesn't matter. Then, so I'm adding here a new variable, calling this player transform and setting the type to transform. Just compile and save and close this here. Then I want to implement the save and load game logic in the character class. So I'm going here to the character because I'm using here the third person template, but you can also open whatever character you have if you want to load, uh, save and load the uh, player location. But also if you want to load anything else, you also might not want to implement this in your character, but for example, in a player controller or somewhere else. So. Just open the class, the blueprint class, where you want to implement the save and load game logic. Here I'm creating a new function and calling this save game. Then I'm right clicking here and say create save game object. And I'm selecting here the BP Hour Save Game blueprint. Then I'm promoting this here to variable. Make sure to select here promote to variable. So not the local variable, promote to variable and call this, let's call this our save game ref. And uh, here I'm adding a new sequence node because first I just wanna make sure that uh, this our safe game reference variable has a value and then in the next step we can store stuff in there but at the very beginning this is basically empty so first we're gonna check if this variable has a value so if it is valid if it is valid then we don't have to do anything because then it has a value and it is fine. If it is not valid, so make sure to select here or connect here that is not valid with the create save game object. Then it basically creates a new object and stores this, stores this in the variable. Here in the sequence on then one, so after this was executed, here we can now get a new our safe game ref reference and we can store data in there. We can say uh, we added that the player transform so we can say set player transform and as we are here in the third person character I'm getting the actor actor transform. So if you want to store more variables, you can also say here set and then uh, setting other variables that you added to this save game to store more variables. So here you would basically then store all the variables and then I would add a new then two pin and here I'm dragging in the save game reference again and say 
save game to slot. And this one, for this one, I'm promoting this here to a variable and say save game slot compile then i'm selecting here the save game slot variable and now you can add uh, a slot name whatever you want for example i would call it player data so then we have the save game function done and now we create a new function and call this load game. And what we're doing in here is checking here does save game exist. We're getting the variable we created and connect it here with the slot name. Then we add here branch and if it connect yeah, if if the save game slot exists we just want to load the variables so what we're doing is load game from slot connecting again here the save game slot and here we can cast now to our save game bp our save game And from here, we can get now the player transform. And we can then set the actor transform based on this variable. Then you need to decide what should happen when it tries to load the game, but there was no save game existing. So in my opinion, it's okay if nothing happens then, but what I also have seen often is when there's no save game existing and trying to load, that it then would save the game. So I could here connect with the fault pin save game. But yeah, you just have to see what fits best in your situation. Then I'm going to the event graph and want to add here some keyword inputs to just test if that works. I want to save on the OK. If you cannot find the key directly, just select any key and in the details tab on the right, click here on this little keyboard icon. And then you can just press the key on your keyboard and it's getting applied here. Then I want to do the same for the L key. So on O, I want to save the game. So I'm turning this here. And on L, I want to load the game. Also on the event begin play, we can also trigger this load game function. Compile and save and play. So here we now started at the player start at the default location. I would say I'm walking maybe I'm walking to this location and say or press O on the keyboard. Now the function should have triggered. So I'm walking somewhere else and now press L and there we see we get teleported to this location. So it loaded successfully. And when I'm now closing the game and open it again, then we also should, uh, it also should load the game and we should spawn up here so let's try that and there you see it worked finally i want to show you a solution to not have any more these debug keys to save and load the game but to have it completely automatically so i'm deleting these nodes and here I would say if it loads the game on event begin play that's fine and i'm also adding here a set timer by function name Make sure it's still connected here with the other stuff if you have it here. And then for the function name, I'm taking exactly here 
the name of the save game function. So I'm copying this out, pasting this here. And let's say it should automatically save each second. So with the time I'm enter, enter one. And to make it repeat each second, make also should tick looping here. Then compile and save and test this. Here we spawn up here. Let's say I'm walking here, closing the game, open it, and there we can see it automatically saved and load. Yeah, that was the tutorial. I hope it helped you. If you have any questions left for saving and loading game, then feel free to ask in the comments. And then I would say see you on the next tutorial.